Okay, I just left the conference. I am on my way to Atlanta to meet Seth, who I will introduce later. Wow, that's so shaky, I'm sorry. Um, and then we're gonna drive up to, oh my gosh, to North Carolina, and then stay in a hotel, and then go to Justin's in the morning. Ew, look at that. <laughs> it's like in the shop. At the hotel, we are 30 minutes from Justin's place right now, so we're, we did, we have to leave at 6.30 in order to get there on time. So, yeah, it's so cold. It's so cold outside and windy. Oh my God, hold on. I'm going to take a clip of me outside. <laughs> Seth is actually my dad's best friend, one of my dad's best friends. Uh, he has known my dad since way before I was ever around. And my dad ended up telling him one day everything that I wanted to do and everything I was interested in. And Seth realized that that's kind of what he wants to do too. So. We thought it would be a good idea, since we both know each other really well and we trust each other, to go in on land together and then survey it off, split it, and then we can be neighbors with each other in case, you know, worst case scenario, if I fall and break my back, I can call him and he can be over in a second instead of me being out in the middle of nowhere with nobody. You know, it just, it makes me feel a whole lot better and it makes me more excited as well. So I decided to take Seth on this trip with to Justin's farm because it would be easier for him to actually see what I wanted to do instead of just me saying it because I'm not the best with words. <laughs> it's 5.40 a.m. Oh yeah. From leaving to go to Justin's. Literally, I couldn't sleep. I literally couldn't sleep. But it's so early. Like, <laughs> it's like, it's so cold. It's 26. Yep, 26. I wanted to look somewhat presentable, but we're going to do farm chores and it's super cold, so I'm wearing everything warm. I doubt you guys can see me, probably not well. We are about to leave, we're like 30 minutes away. I am like shaking, excited, nervous, but super, super excited. I'm wearing four layers, so I'm not gonna be cold. Yeah. God, every chicken that got out, always, you would never have another YouTube video. <laughs> <laughs> or they would all be called Chickens Escaping. <laughs> that was my very first video. Who's seen the very first video on YouTube we put up? Whoa! Oh, <laughs> fan! Okay. <laughs> okay, you come to me later, I'll give you the Rooted Life book. No, I already have it. Oh. <laughs> Sign? No. If you're gonna milk a cow every single day, that's a that's a visit. You're gonna be visiting that cow every single day. And so permaculture with design would say get that close to the house. So we have put this cows as close to our house as socially acceptable. <laughs> or as the spouse would allow. <laughs> we're, gonna, oh, we're gonna tie up the dominant cow first. If you don't tie up the dominant cow first, and you tie up the subordinate. And all of a sudden, the dominant cow wants to support its feet. It's 
subordinate can't leave, that comes off as a sign of aggression for her and she comes after her. You're not supposed to do math in public. Unless you have a, I, hey, you guys, you guys are old enough to remember all those teachers saying, I do a scratch. Do not always have a calculator. I always have a calculator. <laughs> permaculture is to make the connection between the things so we don't just have chickens over here and then gardens over here we have them working together and one thing permaculture teaches us that's one thing it teaches us make connections another thing it teaches us is to have things close to the house according to how many visits so think about how many times if you want chickens if you want gardens how many times do you visit those things so chickens theoretically you can let them out in the morning put them up at night that's two visits a day so that's over 700 visits in a year no wonder after 10 years that's 7,000 visits put the chickens as close as you can because you visit them a lot and then with the chickens you're going to want gardens and these are what you call uh, kitchen gardens so what we're going to plant in these gardens are things like uh, lettuces that you, you chop and, and, and they grow back. You, you can go to them several times, unlike if you grow an onion, you pull it once. Although we'll grow some onions in here because we can cut the chives off or whatever. So we, we just imagine this. We can literally come out of our house, go to one of these garden beds, do some weeding, grab some rotten produce, whatever, clean up the garden bed on the way, come into the chickens, throw the weeds, the, 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 the extra produce to the chickens, come in, get the eggs, take the eggs back, grab some Swiss chard on the way back into the house, to cook up some Swiss chard and, and, and eggs for breakfast. Just a regular chicken run, a quick win for you is to go home and put down some wood shavings, wood chips, grass clippings, something in there. They'll love scratching it and killing it and, and eating some of it. And over time it breaks down and becomes compost. I just move the wood chips, load up a wheelbarrow, and put about two to four wheelbarrow loads of compost in each of these raised beds every year, and I'm good. So then you see what's happening? We've thrown the weeds, the extra produce, into the chickens. So the garden has fed the chickens. You shut your coop up at night and have no more than one inch opening, and it's moved somewhat regularly. The snakes pick up on it, and it keeps in one spot. Uh, you're gonna you're gonna eliminate 95 percent of your predator problem it could be a problem you know there was a time when we wanted to decorate our landscape with beautiful animals and chickens and let's free range the chickens and let them find their own land or find their own food and that was all fun and games until a uh, beautiful one comes out barefoot and gets all a uh, uh, chicken poop between her toes <laughs> <laughs> but what we do is you, it's classic with our chicken tractor you take our chicken tractor Put it on an area you want a little garden, a little three foot by eight foot garden. Put the chicken, put, uh, let them till it, manure it for two weeks, move it over. Then we put uh, uh, four inches of compost, then a weed barrier, and then grass clippings or wood chips. And then we take our plant, starts planting right in there right away. Now what she's saying is, if, we, if you were to plant a low growing crop or a fast growing crop like spinach, and that, that spinach comes up, and that leaf touches manure, that's, that's where it then becomes dangerous. Elliot Coleman, the goat of gardening.
the new organic grower, the founder of all this like market organic far gardening stuff in Maine. I went up to visit him on the Great American Farm Tour. Guess what? Here comes the truck with a big old tote of compost. <laughs> Not even from Maine, it was from Vermont. It came from Vermont <laughs> composting. But also went to Vermont composting and I could see why he could do that. Some amazing compost. So comp good compost is really hard to make. Just buy some compost. It's like bulletproof. It will bulletproof your garden. There's no shame in it. It's still gonna be less expensive than in the store. Maybe even more because you're gonna have more production and success with it and more enjoyment. So, and, and maybe you like to make compost and I'm not shaming that, but I'm also, what I'm bringing this up for is I give you permission to pick and choose. You may love to get out there and warm yourself with firewood uh, by, by chopping it and burning it but you might not you might you, you might can't stand it buy some firewood spend that time money and energy on something else that you do enjoy and that you are good at and maybe you make trade prevent burnout we have once a week what we call a zero day it's usually on saturday but because we had this we're going to do our zero day tomorrow just do the chores we won't do any extra projects you guys know what i mean by that so there's chores and i'll compartmentalize things we'll go on chores and we'll give ourselves a certain amount of time for chores. And when you do that, give yourselves a certain amount of time. Most of you are working. We're all working. I have a job too, outside of this. You know, we're making movies. I'm working Abundance Plus. That's my job. You all have jobs too. So you only have so much time. If chores took me all day long, you wouldn't see another YouTube video. You wouldn't see Abundance Plus. That's gonna force you to get the most, the things that are most important to your heart, hopefully. Like what you actually want to grow, what you actually want, you'll go at those first. And then what you can feasibly do, that, that, that. And then you'll want to start smoothifying your systems so that you can get more done in that 30 minutes or an hour and a half. As soon as I get Everflow waters in here, that's gonna cut off 10 minutes of chore a day. And now allows us to grow and expand or gets us out of chore earlier and we can spend more time on the project. Winnie, right there. I don't know if you can tell. Look, there she is. She's so freaking cute. But yeah. Justin's farm was amazing, meeting him was amazing. I didn't record myself meeting him because I wanted it to be more personable. I didn't want to, I don't know. I'm still kind of weird with my camera around people and I just, I wanted to be comfortable and the best way for me to be comfortable was to not do that. I didn't meet him, I met him and Rebecca. Uh, he signed my book and they praised me for being so young and interested because apparently the average age of farmers nowadays is like 65. So I guess my generation, we need to get on it. It's an amazing experience. I'm really glad I went. Uh, Put, put myself out there, pushed myself past my limits of comfortability. But I think it was great because me and Seth got to talk and I got to meet one of my idols, pretty much. Thank you guys for watching. If you liked the video, please leave it a like and subscribe if you want to see some more. I definitely have some more, more videos planned. Uh, thank you so much. I appreciate you watching as always. I'm like so awkward about this. I'm like, <laughs> it's not that big of a guess. Look at my kale. It's so big. Nope. She's so cute.